to Razor Active. I'm Yvonne, and I have with me in our living room our Razor TV editor Eugene Liao and the newspaper and the new papers. <laughs> the new newspaper. It's the all the same. Eh? The sports editor Ernest Lewis. You have been very used to him by now. Yes, and tonight up on the table, topic of football, uh, starting with England versus Kazakhstan. Am I right? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about the World Cup qualifiers, lah. That's right. We are. Mm -hmm. Well, so, first up, uh, we have uh, the hottest topic of all would be England versus Kazakhstan this Sunday. Okay, I guess. Is okay. it going to be a blowout? England, Kazakhstan. I think everyone's talking about the scoreline already, right? You tell me. They're, they're talking about 3 0, maybe even uh, 4 0, the daring ones. Uh, Kazakhstan is ranked 131st in the world. Where's Singapore? Singapore is ranked uh, 100 and. 32nd. So, are we so above? no, Kazakhstan's uh, a place above us. Right. So, I think, and, and also Kazakhstan, right, they've decided to bring in a couple of youngsters from the under-21 team. So, if, against this team, right, if you're looking at the pedigree and the experience, on paper, it looks like it's a no contest. Uh, the tricky match for England is going to be actually next Wednesday. Belarus, you know, you've got Alexander's Labs team and all that. Mm -hmm. But I think what probably England is looking for is for a resounding victory mm -hmm. uh, this Saturday, this weekend. And uh, if they can get it, yeah, it'll be good for them, you know, for their confidence. I think they need to get some kind of rhythm going at least. They've been chopping and changing uh, with the players and partnerships and, and, of course, you know, famously with the managers as well. So... They seem to need some kind of stability more than other teams, you know. So let, me, let, me, let me ask you a question here, okay? Now, okay, Kazakh countries like Kazakhstan, they're all uh, they're all like small countries in, in European competition. Yeah. Should qualifying be a uh, more two-stage uh, process, meaning that you know, our, our, our big countries like England, Spain, Germany, when they play countries like Kazakhstan and so on. Mm. Uh, I mean, hmm. the the results foregone. Now. So why yeah. even bother? Should it be like a Champions League yeah. uh, format where you have the smaller countries play each, play with each other first, and if they come out from that, then they earn the right to play the bigger boys. I mean, would that be a better format, or would you would you still rather stick to the current? I don't know. I, I think it's been it hasn't been tweaked in a long time and everyone knows the format quite well over the de mm. decades and all that but why, and you would gotta, you, but why would we watch a game against like England versus, it's like watching Singapore versus England in a competitive yeah. match but why would he it's not even competitive I think it's the same thing with Champions League I I, I, I bet you could find a big group of people yeah, out there yeah but Champions League you have are. qualifiers or you have pre-qualifiers like Liverpool yeah. and um, Arsenal they have to go through pre-qualifiers because yeah. they end up third and fourth so I, I don't know I, I, I think it's okay mm. I think it gives the smaller nations a chance to play against some of the big boys and for the bigger teams also because it's a long process you know mm. it takes about two years the qualifying process and it's a chance for them to tweak the teams and as you can see look, take a look at England they had two years to qualify for Euro and they still couldn't get it right yeah. you know if you cut down that process and go straight into it yeah but, but is, is that an better. argument for like uh, for, for a purist point of view yeah. or a purist point of view you want to look at quality mm. okay and quality means you know you have proper matches competitive matches yeah and not have your, like I said, your England's, or maybe not England, England is, you know, perhaps overrated, but you know, perhaps yeah. your, your top tier teams versus your second tier teams. You know, why, why, why not make it more competitive, make it more compelling, so that, you know, even when you broadcast it over television, and that's all about television money yeah. these days, and then you can attract the bigger, bigger crowds, and then... And, and, um, I, I think, you know what, they probably know that's going to happen eventually, in mm -hmm. once you get to the World Cup finals itself. If you have uh, more... Uh, like a strainer-like approach before you reach the World Cup Finals, there may be a worry f that it may douse out the fire that you expect in the World Cup Finals itself. Yeah. Mm. So it's, I, I don't know, I still like the idea, you know, football always started with that small little Roy of the Rovers thing, you know. And nowadays some of the smaller teams, uh, smaller nations can really upset, you know. Mm. Even Faroe Islands, you know. They may, they may improve and they may hold the teams. You know. It depends, again, on the uh, tactical approach and all that. I mean, you look at the English Premier League, a lot of the smaller teams are becoming better now. Mm. You know, and I find that at an international level now, it's also becoming a bit harder, mm. as England have well found out. Mm. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. so, looking back at the, at, the, at the match 
England versus Kazakhstan. Mm. Let's take a quick look at the group, group six that England and Kazakhstan are in. Yeah, um, of the two, I think England's main competitors will come from Croatia and Ukraine. So the two of them are playing actually uh, this weekend. So that result will be crucial. So England definitely needs to win on the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you have the group standings, the group tables. You can take well, a look at that. But as I said again, Belarus is the tricky one on Wednesday. So they really need to get their system, uh, the flow, the rhythm going with this weekend's game against uh, Kazakhstan before. Okay, but, they, I mean, yeah. Looking at this group fresh, if I was looking at it for the first time, I would say yes. You know, you're absolutely right. Ukraine and Belarus would be. Oh, sorry. Um, Ukraine and Croatia would be the big uh, yeah. threats to, to England qualifying for the World Cups. But having said that, I mean, England have played Croatia mm. in Zagreb. Yeah, they won they've beaten one. Yep. exactly. They've beaten yes. the Croats, so it's fair to say that it's, it's England's um, mm -hmm. um, group to lose. Group to lose, like. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, also, they can who, else, do, uh? who, who else can they I mean, if they're going to play Croatia again, yes, yeah. true, but they're going to play it in Wembley. So, like I said, la, I mean, like, um, so... It's best to lose, la, actually, as it's you said. It's best to lose, la, yeah. But, you know, with England, famous for self-destruction. Uh, although, I don't know, I, I have a feeling that Fabio Capello can do something decent with this team, mm. you know. I think if you look on paper, I myself am not a... Uh, fan of England never have been actually I don't support mm. England at the uh, international team level but and I always famously always predict usually in wh whichever the major tournaments I'm always usually writing the predictions that they will get knocked out in the quarterfinals mm. and so far I've been right I think uh, but with Fabio Capello he could do something decent with them in the sense that I think they really need to get rid of all this egos and uh players dictating who should be in the starting eleven, you know, or maybe they, they always like to do that, mm. trump up their own chances of starting the game. Maybe they say someone else should be a captain for... I mean, that's not your thing to decide on, no? but the English players, they love to do it. Mm. They always talk it up before the games and I don't know, Capello needs to instill some discipline. Mm -hmm. Let me ask mm. you this, I mean like, no, we, 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 we grew up here and uh, we've been fed on a constant diet of English football. Yeah. And so we always think that uh, you know, England is the best team. You know, <laughs> the world it. revolves around England. You know, right? We always think that the best yeah. team is England. And on, uh, the only thing that's missing with the English is that they need a system. Mm. They, need, they just need a little bit of tweaking here and there and, and they will conquer the world. Yeah. And uh, time and again, <laughs> you know, every World Cup, every European Championship, we've been disappointed. Yeah. At best, quarterfinals. Yeah. Even lucky to get out of the group stages or even the, 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 the first stage. So, so is it true that is it is it true that all England needs is a strong manager to to to, to make the, the 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 different pieces of the jigsaw fit together? Is it as simple as that, or is it or is England just simply overrated? Uh, England's overhyped, overrated in the sense that yes, for all the performances that they pulled off so far in the last maybe four years since Euro two thousand and four, uh, or even two thousand and two, as far back as two thousand and two, I think overrated in terms of that. But in terms of potential. And player ability shouldn't be. Yeah, but we're, we're always talking about potential, and they always fall flat on their faces. Yeah, that's because I think if you, they always talked about. Uh, they had Sven Eriksson first, mm. and then of course uh, Steve McLaren, which was also like a carbon copy of Sven Eriksson. Right. But I think the problem is the system of play. You know, again, you had certain players who wanted to be in certain roles. They couldn't have Joe Cole playing on the left. Then they could have uh, Sean Wright Phillips playing on the right. And Steven Gerrard has to be in the middle. He can't be uh, too far behind. You know, he needs to be in a certain space, and that's the only space he can. Okay. Basically, the whole thing about England is inflexibility, right? Okay. Now that Capello has come in. Yeah. All right. How different is Capello's formation, team lineup, different from McLaren, mm. different mm. from Sven? You know. You don't know, right? You don't. Yeah. You look at the first eleven. Yeah. <laughs> It's still the same players, yeah. same formation. So, so what has changed or what is it? Apart from Theo Walcott, yeah. what, what else okay, has changed for the, the England team? About they're still going to start with, from what I've read for in, all intents and purposes. They're still going to try and persist with Lampard and Gerrard. Okay, maybe let's, let's start from there. Mm. Lampard and Gerrard, do yeah. they work as a team? Can they work? Lampard and Gerrard, right? Interestingly, they asked Lampard, when's the last uh, game that you uh, performed well with Steven Gerrard? And he couldn't remember... But I tell you which game it was, uh, because I went back and I had to go back like, 
It was in Euro 2004 when they beat Argentina. Mm, yeah. Zero. Now, the thing about that Euro 2004 campaign, why no England was uh, so successful uh, in that? Because essentially they sat back deep. Gerard and Lampard sat back deep. And then they allowed Wayne Rooney mm. to operate from the halfway line. And he was like basically the service line for Michael Owen up front. Very straightforward. Simple, no fuss, no hush. And this is going to be the one-off. Uh. That's it. And yeah. the English guys, the English players, they find this concept very easy. You know, leave us to do our thing and then keep it simple. That's what they like to do. And Lampard and Gerard, they sat back. They just had to defend. The thing is, once we started, once uh, they started to encourage Lampard and Gerard, oh, you got to attack. Now it's fine when you're, they're sitting back, but when they were encouraged to attack, that's the problem because the two of them are actually attacking midfielders, right? Then, so they start going into this philosophical debates. Of, oh, okay, Steven Gerrard is better pumping up up front. Then yeah. Frank Lampard is the kind of player that you don't expect him to be up and down. You know, he needs to operate just behind the strikers, right? And the problem is, I've noticed the two of them. And the problem is actually not with the ability or that they can't fit. The problem is their mindset. When they play with each other, after a while, they feel like as though they're self-conscious. So, for example, Steve, Steven Gerrard enjoying himself up front. Then, for, after a while, he feels like, okay, maybe I should let Lampard have a go. You know, mm -hmm. then I'll sit back. Now, they're doing that because they don't want to uh, hurt each other's feelings, right? Players' feelings. They don't actually talk about it, but from the way they're playing, you can see they're trying Body to language. bring the other player in, and then he's trying to fall back. And then once they lose that, they lose that uh, rhythm. I don't know why, for some reason reason they can't seem to compromise and bring the best but I think too much self-consciousness they're not taking the game by by the handle itself and they're allowing themselves to compromise their own fighting spirit or mm. maybe their own qualities and that's why they don't seem to perform well okay. coming yeah. back to my previous point about these uh, second rate mm. uh, in terms of quality playing against them so what if England spanks Kazakhstan 10 mil and Gerard and, 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 and Lampard yeah. perform so what I mean that's against Kazakhstan. That's like, wow, the so greatest what? thing the world has seen. So what? I mean, just watch the so headlines if they think that's, that's, that's exactly yeah. the thing, if they think that's the second coming and they come against a yeah. proper team, uh, um, the Italians or the Portuguese, yeah. and they persist with Gerard and Lampard, I mean, that's not going to prove anything. Mm. So, what, so even if they click in against uh, the match against Kazakhstan, yeah. it doesn't prove anything ultimately. Right? Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, and I think Capello, I mean, he comes from Italy. Uh, they're known for the tactical... Uh, a high level of tactical knowledge, you know. But I think he also knows that he's in charge of an English team. And with the English team, the good thing about Capello is that he's really much more pragmatic than some of the other uh, coaches. So he knows what he needs to do, which is to find uh, people who are in form in the first place, uh, get a rhythm in. I think that's what they really need. I, I'd like to see Steven... Gerard and Frank Lampard not be so self-conscious, you know, not trying to, hey, you, I don't worry, I'll give you a chance, you know, after a while, then we'll switch over, you know. I mean, that's not the way it should be. You know, you should be, if you feel more comfortable up front, you know, the other guy should be able to sit back. Mm -hmm. But, again, if you look at the qualities, there may, again, uh, in the end, be a problem with that. Because every time England plays well, you look at the midfield combination, there's always a holding midfielder like Gareth Barry right? and Steven Gerrard. Mm. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And Steven Gerrard doesn't have to be so self-conscious to worry about Frank Lampard's feelings and all that <laughs> on the pitch. Can I, ju can I just yeah. say one thing? England players and, um, and tactical nuances and know-how that Capello <laughs> brings is an oxymoron. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they don't. Yeah, they don't. I mean, yeah. they're not sophisticated. I mean, I don't, when you, you hear England, yeah. England, England uh, coaches talk about post-match yeah. uh, uh, um, media conferences and stuff, and they say, oh, you know, we didn't give enough, enough heart. Mm. You know, uh, we were running through, you know, our legs were tired or whatever. They cover yeah. every blade of grass or whatever. Yeah. But they never, never talk about the tactical nuances. They never talked about, you know. Yeah. It's all, it's, for England, it's always about heart. Yeah. Okay. And so <laughs> there you have it. You have a bunch of 11 players running, you know, all over the place like Hitler's chickens, whatever. No doubt about it. they got mm. tremendous heart and everything. But in modern day football, yeah. it's more than that. You know, it's, it's beyond that. That's yeah. why they've gone back to the Emil Heskey thing, right? And Correct, yeah. David Beckham and Peter Crouch were actually two of the more successful uh, players in the last World Cup. Mm. But the two of them were not really wanted by the rest of the players because they all thought, oh, we could have a more sophisticated approach. But when they were given a chance without Beckham, especially in the Portugal game, <laughs> Lampard and Gerard were mysteriously missing. Mm. Mm. In fact, you needed Owen Hargreaves and... 
Yes. The thing is, you know, England, when England plays, right, for all the sophistication and whatever d- desire to be, play the continental style, right? I mean, look at the fans. They always say, get it in there. Get it in there. And yep. after a while, you see them get frustrated, the one touch passing. So they just pass it back out. Okay, just pump it in. Yeah. What's, what's wrong with the four four two? I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, they, 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 the English teams were dominant in the 80s. Yeah. They played nothing. They only played one system. Maybe that's where they need to go back to, to the They 18, only played right? one system, 4 yeah. 4 and, and that's the only system they know. Everybody's yeah. just familiar with it. Yeah. And Arsenal, Arsenal plays a 4 4 2. Yeah. You know? But the way they played is different from the way we knew of the English game. The English game, 4 4 2, I don't know. I mean, when I was learning football, it was also the 4 4 2 thing, right? Based mm. on the English thing. All of us, when you grew up in Singapore, yeah. it was always 4 4 2. What did they tell you? Okay, if you get the ball on the wing, just run all pump the way down and just pump it in, right? Yep. Yeah. Simple and, and that's, straight. Yeah. That's essentially what they're still trying to do, and which is what they do best, admittedly. So, so, so you, guys, you guys think it's a case of uh, too much heart and too little strategy? No, they, they have that. They have the knowledge. It's just that when they get into an England jersey, they just forget about all <laughs> this tactical nuances and they just want to give it. They, they're so pumped up yeah. that sometimes it's easy to forget all this. Mm-hmm. Uh, tactical stuff and all that, yeah. you know. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, we wonder whether it is really a case of too little strategy, and we wonder how Capello will play his game. So, what Razor TV did is we went down to the street and pounded a few people for what they would do if they were Capello. So, let's take a look. What do you think of the game tomorrow, England versus Kazakhstan? Uh, it should be an easy game for England. Uh. They should win by at least two goals. So they have been performing pretty well for the past two games. Do you think it's going to be a trashing game tomorrow? Uh, if they can play up to their potential, yes. Okay. What do you mean? You mean usually they don't play up to their potential? Sometimes they have a bad game after a few good games, so it's quite difficult to predict. If England can walk away with a win. Uh, because, uh, because in the Euro, Euro 2008, they didn't qualify, so I think they will make up for this. Uh. I think it will be a low-scoring game. England, they have some pretty good players. But just that, they can be quite inconsistent. 3 0 to England. <laughs> you sound very confident, why? Um, I think they're coming into form at the right time. Mm-hmm. I, um, Rooney started scoring again, and Walcott's in form. So I, 3 0 to England. Might put default and this uh, Peter Coach, because they've been performing quite well at their, post, at their club at Portsmouth. So he might give them a chance to gel together. Uh, being a Liverpool fan, I will hope they put Gerard. But then I'm not too sure whether he and uh, Lamp- Lampard can gel together. So it's, I think it can be quite a sticky situation. I'll stick to the same lineup that he had for the Croatia game. Um, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Okay. Yeah. So who's going to be a striker? Um, Heskey and Rooney. Okay. How about the midfielders? Um, the midfielders, I think uh, Gerard and Lampard just can't work together. But uh, in the past, it has been proven that uh, Gerard and Barry have worked well together. I think uh, that will be the solution to England's midfield conundrum. John Terry for the nine if they're fit. Um, Ashley Cole, I don't, I don't know whether he's fit. Then Wes Brown on the right back. Um, Lampard, Gerard, Sean Wright Phillips. Um, yeah, right mid for Sean Wright Phillips. I don't think Joe Cole is fit, so. Um, Maybe Walcott to play on the left, and then Peter Crouch and Rooney. Yeah. Hey, when Rooney will be pairing up with uh, maybe Michael Owen, but too bad he is not selected. <laughs> okay. You think it's a pity that Michael Owen's not playing? Uh, yeah, he's kind of because uh, he's a uh, he's a potential striker. The only thing is that maybe because of, due to his injury, uh, uh, then he doesn't. But he has been performing well in other matches, and he's not in the game. What do you think? Uh, that's it. O- o- even though he will be playing for Newcastle. Man, Newcastle be, uh, I mean, been losing, but he did score a few goals for them. What do you think of Owen not playing this time again? I think he way, he's way past it already. He's way past it? Yeah, his legs are gone, man. He's no longer the uh, Owen that we used to know. He's just been a victim of uh, the things that have been happening at his club. So uh, it's not really his fault that he's on the bench. And, but I think eventually Capello will have to include Owen because you just can't uh, ignore someone who's scored 40 over goals for his country. Well, uh, do you think that uh, that Capello should be playing his game that way? Or if you have some ideas of your own, just tell us, if you were to play Capello for the day, how would you place England? How would you play England? Uh, we'll find out more from our two guests in this living room right after the break. 
试试看。